Hello students welcome to e pathashala i am dr vasanthi professor and head department of biotechnology kamaraj college of engineering and technology virudhanagar tamil nadu in today's module we are going to see about the properties of lipids in the earlier modules we have seen about lipids their chemistry and classification and the structure of various classes of lipids but today we are going to see about the properties of different classes of lipids before that let us just understand a very very important and interesting fact is fat fattening we are not able to control eating a lot of food varieties that contain that have higher amounts of lipid so is fat really fattening no would be a biochemist answer because we need fat because they give us the ability to store excess caloric energy for future usage the carbohydrates we consume will be instantaneously used for energy production in the form of atp but what if we need it during a future usage where we are not able to have food where we are uh, we are forced to our starvation then it is our fat reserves which come to our rescue and they provide us energy and i feel the lipid molecules or the fats have only helped us as a human race and human species during the time of famine the normal fat reserves are a signal that metabolic processes are efficient and a person is healthy excess fat is bad no fat is also bad so we have to have a balance we need to have the adequate amount of fat content in our body so what are lipids really doing a lot about it we all know it is they belong to a scientific group of molecules called hydrocarbons lipids they perform three important biological functions they serve as structural components they also serve as energy storehouses and very importantly they play very significant roles in signaling as we all know we have already seen that there are three main types of lipids triacylglycerols phospholipids and sterols a quick recap of what we have learnt in module 14 and 15 triacylglycerol make up to the 95% of lipids in the diet they are commonly found in our fried foods vegetable oil butter whole milk cheese cream cheese and some meat the naturally occurring triacylglycerols are found in many foods the triacylglycerols which we have in our food as we already know if they are solid saturated we call them fats unsaturated and liquid at room temperature oils phospholipid again an acid which contains phosphorus in the place of one of the fatty acid it is a very important lipid which is present in the cell membrane the next important class of lipid is the cholesterol the sterols again it is becoming very very notoriously reputed because it is believed to cause heart attacks and atherosclerosis however cholesterol is also a very very important component because it is part of the cell membrane and it is required for the synthesis of sex hormones vitamin d and bile acids now we let us focus on understanding the properties of lipid there are two important properties of lipid one is called the physical property the other one is called the chemical property what do we mean by physical property the solubility nature its plasticity it is melting point the smoke point and under chemical properties we talk about a whole different set of properties call is the lipid capable of undergoing alkali hydrolysis acid hydrolysis oxidation which we have already seen in the chemistry is can it be polymerized the halogenation isomerization hydrogenation and esterification interesterification and finally the rancidity now let us see in detail the physical properties solubility they are insoluble in water however in the presence of a suitable substance which is known as an emulsifying agent it is possible to form a stable mixture of fat and water which is known as emulsion fats and oils are soluble in organic solvents such as petrol and carbon tetrachloride this property helps us to remove them grease and stains from clothing 
plasticity lipids do not melt at fixed temperature but they melt at over a temperature there is in a triglyceride all the three fatty acids are different each of the fatty acid will have a different melting point some of the fatty acid forming the triglyceride can stay as a solid form for longer than others margarine is a very common example we have a lipid which has got a wide range of plasticity that is why we are able to spread margarine on top of the bread because it has got the plasticity property what is the effect of heat on lipids that is what we need going to understand oils and fats transfer heat to foods which are being cooked but will eventually break down heating causes the triglycerides to decompose so what do we mean by melting point most fats melt at temperatures of 30 to 40 degrees c the melting point of oil is below the normal temperature and let us understand more the double bonds the lower the temperature required for the oil to melt what is smoke point when a fat or oil is heated to a certain temperature it starts to totally decompose not melting decomposing producing a blue haze or smoke we all go through this in our everyday routine whenever we make samosas or any fried food the oil when we keep it for a long time on the pan the oil starts producing flame a blue haze or smoke this is called as the smoke point the smoke point for lard is 185 degrees c and for corn oil is 232 degrees C. now let us have an understanding of the chemical properties of lipids first one we are all very very familiar with this term because we have been studying this right from our sixth standard saponification of fats what do we happen in the presence of an alkali what is a common alkali we know sodium hydroxide we also call it a base this base we are going to link it with an ester that is the fatty acid part of an triglyceride what do we get we get a salt and alcohol this process is called saponification and it is the process of breaking down or degrading a neutral fat into its glycerol and fatty acids by treatment with alkali we get the glycerol backbone separately and the fatty acids separately now the alkali salt of the fatty acid resulting from saponification is what is called as soap so in soap what do we have not the glycerol backbone only the alkali part or alkali salt of the fatty acid saponification number is a very very important unit to define the chemical property it is defined as the milligrams of potassium hydroxide or a base required to saponify 1 g of fat and the formula is the soaps we use for washing consist of sodium or potassium salts of fatty acids like palmitic acid and oleic acid the potassium salts are easily soluble in water but the sodium salts are not soluble in water that is why we call they are hard soaps very important next property hydrolysis the very term tells us what is hydrolysis breaking down of the lipid with water molecules hydration water is going to be there same we have an ester the triglyceride there it was a base here it is water in the presence of heat again we get a fatty acid and alcohol this results in the splitting of some of the fatty acids this can also be achieved by acid hydrolysis it is a reverse of esterification halogenation do you remember we were trying to understand the chemistry of lipids in module 14 wherein i introduced you to the terminology called halogenation very important property of lipid we can add halogens like chlorine bromine and iodine they can readily add to the double bonds of the unsaturated fatty acids and the degree of halogenation is directly proportional on the number of double bonds that can accept halogen groups very very important property of lipids polymerization excessive oxidation is accompanied by polymerization to begin with what is polymerization joining of monomers to make a large structure or a polymer is called polymerization where does this occur in a lipid it occur at the points of again again at the unsaturated place or the double bond place of a fatty acid chain or where can it happen at the juncture of the fatty acid and the glycerol molecule the weak spots probably we can call them the weak spots where the polymerization can take place Do you remember the module 14 we saw about auto oxidation photo oxidation and enzymatic oxidation so very important it's a reaction of an oil or a fat with the oxygen in the air and hence it will also happen with the food that is containing lipid it occurs again where does it occur it occurs at the double bonds or the points of unsaturation i am sure we are now getting a feeling is this unsaturation good or bad let me tell you students 
in everything we have both good and bad we need to take more of the good and to reduce the bad effect the quantity has to be reduced this reaction is not desirable because it will adversely affect the flavor of the fat the smell and the taste the rate of oxidation increases with the increase in temperature exposure and other physical phenomenon oxidation quickly go through module 14 to have a recap of auto oxidation photo oxidation and enzymatic oxidation now we move on to the next important property isomerization isomers are two or more substances that are composed of same elements combined in the same proportions hence having the same molecular formula but necessarily not the same property so the two important types of isomerism in lipids are the geometrical isomers and the positional isomers what do we mean by geometrical isomer a double bond can exist in two configuration this also we have seen in the chemistry of lipids it can either exist as a cis form or a trans form most of the natural fats and oils contain cis form what is cis and what is trans if the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the carbon chain it is called a cis arrangement if the hydrogen atoms are on the opposite side then it is called as a trans arrangement positional isomerism The unsaturated fatty acid can be isomerized either in an acid medium or an alkaline condition with a double bond migrating from one position to another. Another important chemical property of lipid called hydrogenation. This also we have studied in our basic biology. The objective of hydrogenation is to reduce the degree of unsaturation and to increase the melting point of the oil. So what we get the oil can be selectively hydrogenated by using a suitable catalyst and temperature. The hydrogenation of the unsaturated form in the presence of a catalyst also known as hardening. Normally the process of hydrogenation is partial so as to get whatever desired characteristics we want and to avoid a product with a very high melting point. Hydrogenation is a very important property. The rate of hydrogenation is affected by a lot of components like the nature of the substance, concentration, concentration of hydrogen, reaction temperature, pressure and agitation. Another important chemical property is called esterification. It's a reverse of hydrolysis. Fatty acid in the presence of alcohol gives you an ester plus water. Earlier we used to have ester with an acid giving a fatty acid. Now it is a reverse. It's a combining of free fatty acids with glycerol to again form triglycerides. Interesterification. It is also referred to as randomization, rearrangement or modification. The fatty acid esters react with other esters of fatty acid. to form new esters so there is an interchange of fatty acid group you get a totally new type of fatty acid where is it used it is used in the processing of edible fats and oils to produce confectionery or coating fats margarine oils cooking fats and other special application product very industrial oriented chemical property of lipid rancidity is a very important property it is used to describe the spoilage of fats and oils fat which is rancid will have an unpleasant smell and flavor the oxidative rancidity it's a reaction between unsaturated triglycerides and the oxygen which is present from the air the oxygen molecules join across the double bond of the triglyceride molecule and a variety of compounds are formed this reaction is further accelerated by the external environment heat light and the traces of metals which are present in the container in which the lipid is stored the aldehydes and ketones also gives an unpleasant rancid taste there is another type of rancidity called hydrolytic rancidity which is done through enzymes known as lipases they give rise to short chains again this will increase the rancidity of the fats now quickly i am going to introduce to you very important constants or numbers of fats and oils because it is very essential to understand these properties or constants which is used to understand or describe the characteristic of a particular fat and oil this has a lot of industrial significance in industry we identify fats and oils based on their chemical constants it gives us a nature about the fatty acid present a very important physical constant are the specific gravity of the oil different oils have different specific gravity 
and next important property is called the refractive index constant or refractive index value variation every fat will have a definite angle of refraction depending upon the constituent fatty acids so if there is going to be a variation from the normal value for a given fat which is going to indicate us that there is an another adulteration adulteration of the fat or oil has been taken place so refractive index simple test but can show us if the fat is adulterated or not solidification point or setting point it's a temperature at which the fat after being melted is allowed to set back and get solidified again each fat has a specific solidification point in which it will convert from the melted form to the solid form there are six or seven important chemical constants of fats to understand their nature acid number it is defined as the milligram of potassium hydroxide necessary to neutralize the free fatty acids which are present in 1 gram of fat or oil so what does this number tell this number tells us the quantity of free fatty acid which is present in a fat a high acid value means it indicates that the oil or fat stored under improper condition so acid value is an important property to measure the hydrolytic rancidity also iodine number this value is a measure of the degree of unsaturation the number of carbon carbon double bonds in relation to the amount of fat or oil it is defined as the gram of iodine absorbed per 100 gram of the sample and the formula is given the next important is peroxide value what is it useful for it is a measure of the degree of lipid oxidation iodine was a measure of the double bond this is the degree of lipid oxidation that has taken place with respect to the double bonds and this does not talk anything about the stability it just talks about the degree of lipid oxidation it is defined as the number of milli equivalents of peroxide per kg fat it is a measure of the formation of a peroxide group or a hydroxide group that are initial products of the lipid oxidation thereby indicating that the lipid is getting de composed it is not in its original form so we should we use it or should we not use it the richard meisel number rm number it's a measure of the amount of water soluble volatile fatty acid a little confused ma'am you said lipids are not water soluble but some of the volatile fatty acids are water soluble so it is not good if we have a very good rm number it is defined as the number of milliliters of 0.1 and uh, alkali which is necessary to neutralize the volatile water soluble fatty acid you have an acid so how much of alkali is required to neutralize it another important number is called as the polanski number again which gives the measure of the amount of volatile insoluble fatty acid rm number volatile soluble fatty acid polanski number volatile insoluble fatty acid nesetyl number another very very important constant of oil it's defined as the amount in milliliters of potassium hydroxide solution required to neutralize the acetic acid which is obtained by saponification of 1 gram of fat or oil after acetylation so first saponification has to undergo how much of acetic acid is released to neutralize that released acetic acid how much of potassium hydroxide the acetyl number is thus a measure of the number of the hydroxyl groups which are present in fat or oil a very important property as far as the industries are concerned so what have we covered in this module we have understood in detail the physical and chemical properties of lipids the physical properties and the chemical properties the chemical reactions that are made possible because of the chemical reactivity groups that are present in the lipids and the constant values are the numbers associated with fats and oils which give a lot of characteristic attributes to the fat or the oil in question so that we will be able to differentiate if the fat is in good condition if the storage condition is good if the fat has been adulterated if the oil has been adulterated or not can it be used for saponification process and n number of industrial applications can be carried out by understanding the constant values and numbers associated with fats looking forward to meet you all in another module on lipids function